Welcome to putting RFID to work in the food supply chain. To get started with RFID, food suppliers will need to first understand source tagging requirements. As mentioned before, passive RFID tags are composed of an inlay that is made up of a chip and antenna mounted on a substrate. The inlay type is important to ensure that the tag properly functions for the product and use case. For example, an inlay for a race car tire will be notably different than one for a case moving through the supply chain. There isn't a single design that would be used for all products. Thankfully, there are standards and labs that evaluate specific inlays for a variety of products and applications. When moving forward with source tagging, you'll want to be sure your inlay has been approved by a certified lab. The process of determining the inlay type includes assessing the appropriate location to place the inlay on the case or carton. From a process perspective, the ideal place for the inlay is to embed it in the existing GS1-128 barcode label. This requires certain positioning on the case or carton. Such positioning enables certain processing apparatus to reliably read the barcode. Factors that drive label placement include Carton content, high moisture products, or metal containers will act as a barrier if placed between the tag and reader antenna. An approach to manage this is to either outward face palletized cartons or move the inlay to an upper edge of the packaging where there is an air gap. Carton inspection process An RFID tag has a very small amount of metal used for the microchip and antenna. If using a manufacturing line metal detector, after applying the RFID label, then place the label to be appropriately masked. Avoiding damage. Ensure that the normal handling of the product does not result in an impact on the tag. Pallet management. Design carton tag placement and palletization processes to avoid the possibility of two RFID tags directly touching each other as doing so could impact readability. Non-removal. Finally, the tag should not be placed in a location that might be removed, for example, the case or carton lid, as a part of normal operations. An accredited lab can help assess the right tag type and tag placement for your product and operations. The product identity data encoded in the RFID tag is commonly referred to as the EPC or electronic product code. The EPC logo indicates that an RFID tag that meets GS1 data standards is present. This helps to avoid confusion if supplemental downstream tagging occurs. Best practices are to mark cases with this logo. Many cases or cartons already have a GS1-128 formatted barcode as part of the logistics label. That barcode can encode a variety of application identifiers, which are commonly understood data attributes under the GS1 system of standards. In this example, we see AI01, which indicates a GTIN, or product identifier, batch lot AI10 in the barcode, as well as an expiration date AI17. The same data encoded in the barcode can be encoded in the EPC. The GS1 US Food Service Implementation Guidelines specifies that case or cartons containing food products or consumer-facing food packaging have a date value encoded in the EPC and, if deemed business critical, a batch or lot value as well. For line encoding, the most straightforward process approach is to upgrade an existing barcode label solution which is already applying shipping or logistics labels to cases or cartons. Such an upgrade would require new label stock that includes the RFID inlay, an encoding module in the printer, appropriate software and or printer settings. This approach leverages existing physical processes and data to minimize the level of change management required. If an existing barcode label solution is not in place, another approach is to have an RFID tag pre-placed by the corrugate provider. This requires a robust line encoding solution and is explained in more detail in the implementation guideline. 
Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website.